The first official day of summer was about a month ago, which means we are past due for starting some summer reads. Now, to make this video extra summery, I thought it'd be fun to do summer activities while reading summer books. So I made a little summer bucket list. It has a ton of activities like swimming, going on a trip, and more. So let's get into the summer mood. Hello, I just got back from the gym and I am so hot and sweaty and it sounds so nice to jump into a cold pool. So I thought it would be perfect for the start of this video for our first summary activity to go swimming and read in the pool. I'm currently reading Into the Tide by Laura Pavlov. And this book is about Lila and Hugh. And Lila is Hugh's best friend's little sister. So very like forbidden romance. It takes place in a small town, which I feel like is very like summer vibes. And it takes place during one summer. Hugh owns a restaurant and Lila is gonna work at his restaurant for the summer. And I'm liking it so far. I'm on on page 242 I have like a hundred pages left so I feel like I can finish it for sure today or tomorrow and the author sent me this book and she also sent me these two cutouts of the characters which is so fun I've been using them as my bookmark okay I'm gonna go put on a swimsuit pack a little bag and head to the pool just got dressed packed my bag and the sun is setting so fast so I need to hurry I'm gonna do a little face mask and tell you what my thoughts from Into the Tide so far. Our main character, Lila, is only in town for the summer and I'm so curious how they're gonna resolve that plot point because at the end of the summer, she's going to Chicago, like a completely different state for a job she has lined up. And Hugh, the male love interest, he owns restaurants in their small town, which I feel like is something you can't just like walk away from and easily do like somewhere else. So I love like when books have like very realistic conflicts, like having different jobs in different cities like how do you get over that to be able to be together and then we also have brother's best friend and they're like scared to tell her brother about the relationship because he is really overprotective it was also so nice to go swimming i feel like so much that I do like all day outside of reading is like on a computer or watching TV or just something like inside with a screen. So I was just like, wow, I feel like I haven't just like gone and sat outside for a while in so long. So I think this summer my goal is to swim and just read by the pool way more. Okay, I'm gonna finish putting on my face mask and then sit and read for the 15 minutes that this has to sit. Just washed off my face mask and I'm all ready for bed. One thing that I feel like is perfect to do before bed or just generally in the summer when you have some extra free time is to get in some extra learning. Brilliant.org is an online learning platform that offers interactive courses in math, science, computer science, and more. Brilliant is perfect if you wanna strengthen your knowledge in your current career or if you're looking to learn something new to potentially switch careers. I really, really love that all of their courses are so interactive. Like their new Thinking in Code course gets you designing simple programs right away from maps, app navigation, to writing a program that automatically responds to work messages. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash or click the link in my description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Good afternoon. So I finished Into the Tide by Laura Pavlov this morning. Let's rate it. Uh, I'm so torn between four stars and 3.5 stars. I think I'm gonna say 3.75 stars. I really liked the story. I feel like it's got so many great tropes. It takes place during a summer, small town, brother's best friend. But there was two things I didn't like. Something with the writing just bothered me a little and I couldn't figure out what it is. And I think that there wasn't enough like show don't tell like i feel like a lot of times the characters just said like exactly what they were thinking or the writing just like told us exactly what the characters were thinking and i don't know sometimes i feel like there should be a little more subtlety or like complexity in the writing and then another big part of the plot is that lila has not lost her virginity and that's something she really wants to do this summer which is a fine plot but i feel like it was just talked about over and over and over again and i didn't care that much about that plot point but overall it was super cute i would definitely read another book by this author summer vibes i would say like 
like a three out of five on the summer vibes. It does take place during the summer in a small town, but outside of that, it doesn't like super lean into the fact that it takes place during a summer. Okay, next up, I'm gonna read Kisses and Croissants. I actually started this book like a week ago. I think I'm on page like 80. And I'm really liking it so far. It's so cute. It's a young adult book. I'm pretty sure it can be read by ages like 12 plus. And yeah, it's the cutest plot. It takes place during a summer in Paris. And our main character, Mia, has always wanted to be a professional ballerina and she is in Paris going to a dance school. And she meets a boy, Louis, who is French. And yeah, it's just been really adorable. I feel like it's gonna be a super fast read. So I'm excited to keep reading it. I think today for our summer activity, I really wanna go get a summery drink. I love the Star Starbucks summer refreshers. That's like the only thing I get at Starbucks. They're so good. And I've heard they have frozen Starbucks refreshers. I think it'd be fun to go to the Starbucks inside Barnes and Nobles. So I can also just peek around the bookstore. I am not going to buy anything. I'm not going to get any books today. I have so many books. I don't need to buy any, but I think it'd be cute to have a summery drink in the Starbucks inside of a bookstore. Okay. I'm going to get dressed and then we'll head to Barnes and Noble. This is my current audiobook, Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Not a summary book, but a very fun book of short stories about Norse mythology, which is something different for me, but I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, I'm at Barnes, so let's go inside. Walking by books and not looking at them. I can't buy them. Okay, maybe I'll take a quick peek at some though. There's so many Christina Lauren books that I have never heard of before. The Song of Achilles with blue edges. I love. I love this edition of the cover. I've only ever seen the blue and purple one before. I really want to read K.L. Walther's new book. I'm back. I successfully exercised self-control and did not buy any books. It was so hard not to buy the new K.L. Walther book because I love the Summer of Broken Rules by the same author. Such a good summary book, like maybe my favorite summer romance. I don't think the new book is summary. I don't know. I actually didn't read the description. Okay, yeah, it says what happens after midnight takes place two weeks before Lily Hopper officially graduates boarding school. So like just on the cusp of summer. Also tried the frozen Starbucks drink. It's so good. And then I read page 116. I'm really liking it. The Paris vibes are so good. I love in books when the city that the book is set in feels like almost a character in the book. Like it's a very like vivid setting. And so I was like, how does the author knows so much about Paris. So I was reading her bio and she grew up just outside of Paris. I think that's very cool that like she has so much real knowledge of Paris to be able to write a book that really feels like you're in Paris. And I'm loving that the main character is a ballerina. I danced growing up for nine years. I haven't danced in so long, but I loved dance as a kid. So it's really cool reading about a character who's a dancer. I'm trying to think if I've read about a character who's a dancer before. I don't know if I have. I have a little bit more of my drink. So I think I'm gonna finish up my drink and read a little more in the car. Read a page 132, and I'm gonna head home now. <clears throat> On our summer bucket list, today we're gonna cross off bucket list item number two, have a picnic. It's currently 103 degrees, and there is an excessive heat warning, and the feels like it's 109 if you add in the humidity. Great, okay, I actually did not know that. Oh gosh, okay, going outside and having a picnic actually sounds horrible. I feel like I will bake alive. Maybe I will wait until like 8 p.m. I definitely wanna do a picnic today and read. I feel like it'd be a really cute summer activity. I was about to say I have some ice cream, maybe I can bring that to cool me down, but it would just melt. So despite the excessive heat warning, I will be going forward with my plan <laughs> for better or worse. Anyway, I did some reading today and I got to page 190. This book is so freaking cute. It's so adorable. It's like definitely like a lighter, fun read until now something happened and it's making me stress, but I'm also loving this feeling of like stress and like what's gonna happen. Basically Mia is having this like summer fling romance with Louis, who's a French boy. And they're finally confronting the fact that she is gonna be leaving at the end of the summer. So like, how could their relationship possibly continue? I feel like we have had that book in some situations before like Into the Tide, the last book I read, they had the same situation, but they were only states apart. They are countries apart, continents apart. So I don't know how we're gonna resolve that. Anyway, I'm gonna pack 
my picnic bag, and then I'll see you guys later when it's a little less sunny outside. All right, it's 8 p.m. I think the sun has finally gone down enough to where I will not die of a heat stroke, so let's go read and picnic. Picnic all set up. Now this sun is nice. I think I came at the perfect time. Still says 98 degrees, but it's actually so nice outside right now. A really cute friendship is starting to form in this book and I love friendships in books. Goodbye sunset, time to pack up. Let's go back in. I finished kisses and croissants. Oh my gosh, wait, it kind of matches my sweatshirt. That's so cute. Yeah, I finished the book. I would give it four stars. It's so cute. And I feel like a four on the summary scale, like it takes place during a summer. We're in Paris on vacation. It's not like super beachy or anything, but the summer vibes are there. And yeah, it's so cute. I loved me and Louis. I loved like getting thrown into the world of ballet and dance. And Mia also has this like family legacy where she thinks that one of her aunts ancestors was painted by Degas, but she's not sure. So they were also like running around the city trying to find this Degas painting of her ancestor, which is also like so fun and cool, like going in museums and seeing paintings. So great vibes, so cute. Something happens at the end that surprised me, which I appreciate like a surprising ending or a surprising moment. And I feel like the ending was like great for character growth. I thought the plot was gonna be predictable, but I'm glad the ending kind of threw something in there that I just didn't see coming. Four stars and not any higher, just because it is like a lighter, kind of fluffier romance. And I feel like something needs to have more depth to it to be like considered for five stars. But if you're looking for like a light, fun summer read, like this book is so cute. Like I enjoyed it so, so much. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have very exciting, crazy news. It's currently a Wednesday and I just got a call from my manager that I'm being invited on a brand trip by Notability and I would leave on Sunday, like literally in four days and I'm just finding out about it. Like that is so fast of a turnaround, but also so exciting. It's in Boston, so they would fly me out to Boston for this creator event that's there. I would literally fly in Sunday, have some time to like sightsee, do my own thing. The creator event would be on Monday and then I would fly home Tuesday. So such a fast trip, such a fast turnaround. My head is like spinning like what do i need to get for this trip i need to pack like what do i need to do before then but that's so cool i've never been on a brand trip before or like have had anybody fly me out for anything like that's so freaking cool and one of the items on my summer bucket list was go on a trip i thought that like wouldn't be fulfilled until later in the summer because i have some like personal trips planned later in the summer but we can cross that off now and bring a summary book to read in boston and i'm gonna pack meet me at the lake for our next summer read by carly fortune so let's get packing It feels good to lie down. Sorry if it's kind of loud here. I do not know how to turn the AC off. I made it to Boston. I am so tired. I'm so tired. I only read like 30 pages between lunch and the plane because I feel like I've just been like not even comprehending what I'm reading. I stayed up really late last night, which I should not have. And then I had to get up at 5 a.m. this morning for my flight. So I only slept for a few hours. And traveling in general, I feel like just kind of makes me feel gross. But I am liking the book so far. Hang on. Let me bring you a little closer. We have a dual timeline between 10 years ago and present day. And in present day, Fern, her mother just passed away. And so she's taking over her mother's lakeside resort. So very like summer vibe so far, which I'm loving. And then one day at the resort, Will just shows up and she hasn't seen Will in 10 years. So we're kind of seeing in the past timeline, like how her and Will met. And basically in the past, they had spent 24 hours together and then they agreed to meet one year later, but he never showed up. So now it's 10 years later and he showed up just out of the blue. And we have no idea why like he missed their meeting 10 years ago, or I guess nine years ago, or really much about him at all. So it's kind of cool, like unraveling the story of them going back and forth between both timelines. Also, Notability left me a gift, so I'm gonna open it. I'm so excited. Oh, it's just full of so many snacks. That's so nice. Popcorn, gummy bears, 
little cookies, Cheetos, chocolate, more cookies, gum, and coffee. Oh my gosh. And then the itinerary of what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. That is literally so nice. I am going to munch all of these. Okay, I think I'm gonna chillax, read a little bit more, maybe like shower and get like fully ready because I just feel kind of gross from traveling. And then I'm gonna go out and explore Boston. Okay, I relaxed, got all ready. I feel way better. Let's go explore Boston. It is so peaceful sitting here and this flatbread is surprisingly so good. It's incredible. The buildings right off the park are stunning. I don't know if they're houses or what, but I would love to live here. Hello, I've made it back to my hotel after my sightseeing. Traveling alone is weird. It's interesting. This is my first time ever traveling anywhere alone and I don't know how I feel about it. On like the one hand, there's something like so cool and like freeing and relaxing about like you can just do anything you want at any time you want and just having alone time is very nice. But then on the other hand, I feel like it's just a little more boring to do like big sites and stuff and not have anyone to share it with. Like I planned a bunch of stuff that I was gonna do in the last few hours and I just went through everything way faster than I thought because I feel like I would look at something and be like, okay, cool. And then go to the next thing versus if you were there with somebody else, you'd probably really talk about it and share in that moment and hear their opinion and talk about yours. And so just not having another person there to share it with, I don't know, it feels like less interesting and less meaningful to sightsee without somebody. So solo traveling so far, I'd put out like a five out of ten it's got some perks got some cons anyway in the book i am liking it so far i went into this book a little nervous because i read every summer after also by carly fortune and i really liked it until the end i didn't like the ending i still gave it like 4.5 stars because again loved it until the very end so i'm nervous for this book on if it's gonna like throw me a curveball that i won't like like in every summer after but so far i am really liking it and it's giving me all the summer vibes that i need okay i'm gonna get ready for bed probably read a little more and then i'll update you guys tomorrow on where I'm at in the book. Today's the day of the creator event that I'm here for. I'm almost done getting ready, but yeah, I'm about to leave. I'm excited, a little bit nervous because I'm not gonna know anybody there, but I think it's gonna be fun. Hello, it's 11 p.m. now. Today was so fun. I literally didn't need to be nervous at all. Everybody was so nice. It was a pretty small group, which was really, really nice. Yeah, my first time ever going to a brand event and like flying out somewhere. Such a cool experience. Like I mentioned before, the event was with Notability, which is a note-taking app. And so it was really cool. We got to learn about their app just as a whole and also about all the new features coming up, which is really cool. We actually got to see the beta version of what they're about to come out with, I think at the end of July. So that was so cool we did some journaling in the app and i'm a new notability user so i'm very very excited to like get started like planning videos in the app drawing out thumbnail ideas journaling keeping track of all the books i read and just exploring all of their features so thank you so much to notability for flying us out here to boston for their event literally so freaking cool and i am so pumped to be working with them anyway about the book i'm reading i think i'm gonna get all ready for bed shower and then i might I'd say I'm kind of late reading. It sounds kind of nice. I feel like after big social things, like the event I went to, I'm like both tired, but also kind of wired. I don't know if that makes sense. So I think I might stay up a little bit late tonight reading. Good night.
I'm back from Boston. Wow, that was a fun trip. The travel day home was not quite so fun. I was supposed to have a flight and then a layover and a second flight. My first flight got delayed, so I missed my connecting flight. So I had like an extra long delay at the airport waiting for my new connecting flight. Long story short, I had so many hours between airports and planes to read and I finished Meet Me at the Lake. I give it four stars. I liked it. I've heard that this book has pretty mixed reviews and I can see why, although I don't fully agree with people's mixed reviews, I feel like where it's getting mixed reviews is that it's not this like perfect, beautiful, magical, like swoon worthy romance. I feel like it's a much more realistic romance about two people who met really at the wrong time in their life and then had to go through like personal growth and their own life experiences to be able to find their way back to each other 10 years later. So I feel like it's a perfect example of like like messy love, imperfect love, and characters with flaws, but they ultimately get their happy ending. And I really appreciate that the characters did have flaws. Sometimes I was mad at them because of their flaws, but overall, I really liked it. The summer vibes are immaculate, like five out of five on the summer vibes. And that is all the books that I'm reading in this video. There's still so many more summer books that I wanna read before the end of summer. The two books highest on my summer list are The Lake by Natasha Preston and When in Rome by Sarah Adams. The Lake is a thriller mystery that takes place at a summer camp, which I feel like it's just gonna be so fun. I haven't read a thriller in so long, so to read like a summary thriller just sounds really good. And then When in Rome, I've been hearing so much good reviews of Sarah Adams' books and I haven't read any book by her. I don't think this book is like explicitly taking place during summer or involving summer anyway, but it just feels really like fun. It is a small town romance between a pop star and a small town baker. We crossed off the first four items on my summer bucket list. So there's still six left that I will have to do before the end of summer. Should I do like a part too of like doing the rest of the items on my summer book list and reading more summer books. I don't know, it'd have to be in August because then summer will be like coming to an end. I don't know when the last day of summer is, but in my head, like back to school time means like the end of summer. Anyway, that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.